It is one of the most stunning success stories in the history of gay theater, a play which began as three one actors off off Broadway and ended up a four hour trilogy, one of the most successful shows on Broadway along with shows like Dream Girls and Nine can hardly get a ticket to this show anymore, and its playwright and star, Harvey Firestein, is opinionated, political, talented, funny, and impossible to shut up. The star of Tart Song Trilogy, in his dressing room, Harvey Firestein. There were a lot of people that wanted to move Tart Song to Broadway. They all wanted the backroom scene taken out. They wanted the place off and somewhat. Of course, I was not going to do that. And they told our producers, Larry Lane, John Glines, Ken Waisman, Betty Lee Hunt, Maria Pucci, and Donald Tick, and Marty Markinson. That's the whole group. <laughs> Got them, all their names in there. Um, they told them, you know, they were crazy. Right. Said, you know, you're gonna, we've seen it before. We've seen gay plays on Broadway. We've seen ones that made strong statements, and you cannot do that to a Broadway audience, and a Broadway audience is not gonna sit for this, let alone the length of the play, the subject matter, nothing did they like. See, some even wanted to put a star in, in my room and all that. <clears throat> well, here we are a year later, and I just got a letter from the Schubert organization, you know, saying I just saw the play again and I'm still crying, uh, having seen it. So that reaction's been wonderful. And it's not been a... Uh, it's been really nice. I mean, they've, for the most part, those people that told us we would never make it on Broadway, don't move to Broadway and all that, have come up to us and congratulated us and say how happy they are for us. As for the other establishment, the television world I've done, the David Letterman show, um, Two on the Town, the morning shows, all those, the Live at Five and all that, they're a little frightened. Um, I don't know what David Letterman expected when he went, when I or showed up the first time, but he had not seen the show. Yeah. And, uh. no. And, uh, seemed to be a little freaked, but I think they got a lot of good mail on it, so I, they had me back again, and the second time I was on for twice as long as the first time. They've already repeated the shows, so obviously it works. Did he know what to ask you? I keep hearing stories about these David Letterman shows that you've been on that indicate that they were really incredible. Written down questions. Really? They're written down questions, yeah. and I give him obviously non-written down answers, and instead of even re allowing himself to react to the answer that I gave him. He would just skip on to the next thing. <laughs> you know, um, I'm trying to think of an example. I, I had, the second time I went on, I had a chocolate rabbit inside my coat and I took it out and put it on the desk and he said, what's that for? And I said, well, I've been celibate for three years, but I've carried around because I know if I want to have sex, all I have to do is give them chocolate and ask nice, and I could. <laughs> and he, he just looked at me and said, put it away. And I said, it's not for you, David. I, mean, I saw a few guys in your crew. I would, I mean, he just didn't really know what to do. I've been looking uh, at the rabbits in your dressing room. Yeah. How did you find them? <laughs> Can you find six rabbits in this Can picture? Can you find six rabbits? Well, actually, from your camera view, well, there's the drag queen bunny. <laughs> and there's that bunny, and there's the little bunnies playing you in a collect, circle. And you how long have you been people collecting People send me rabbits? all kinds of bunnies, little deco bunnies back there. Um, I never really collected them. <laughs> What do you call this? <laughs> they sort of collected me. Um, I used to give out gifts to friends of rabbit things. Right. And they always knew it was from Harvey, because of the name Harvey the Rabbit. And that's, right. if they can hear that noise in the background, that's my rabbit banging on his bowl looking for more food. Um, eventually people started giving rabbits back to me. I don't know, I could, got confused somehow, and all of a sudden I started getting more and more rabbits. And Tell me about La Cage aux Folles. You're uh, writing the book for the Broadway musical based on La Cage aux Folles. How is it different from the film? La Cage, my La Cage aux Folles, which I wrote with Jerry Herman, is not based on the movie. It's based it on not. the original French play, which the movie was based on, but it is based on the play, not the movie. I've never seen the movie. You haven't? No. And it was, the, uh, the play ran as the longest running play in uh, France. Jerry Herman, as you know of Mame and Hello Dolly, is, is one of those celebratory writers. I mean, I would write up to, I'd write a scene that built to this big dramatic song, you know, of hate and, you know, how you've hurt me and all that. And he'd write a celebration instead. I mean, he just, everything he twists into, I mean, the man is so happy. <laughs> But what we ended up with and what we might have in La Caja Fall is a gay anthem. I think it's I think it's gonna be 
become the gay anthem. There is a song called I Am What I Am. Has Makaja Phil been cast? Yes, all cast. It starts rehearsal on Monday. Oh. And who is it? George Hearn is playing Abin, and Jean Barry is playing Georges. Oh, wow. So, like I said, we ended up with two heterosexuals, but what are you going to do? They have to work, too. I am what I am, I don't want praise, I don't want pity, I bang my own drum, some think it's Lord.